I have a little piece of good news, and to me, it's like just barely good news. But um, the Texas bishop cut ties with Texas Right to Life. Oh, it's yeah. yeah it's not that uh, the Catholics have completely <laughs> changed their minds on these things. Yeah. It's just that they, the Catholics, feel that the Texas Right to Life is too extreme. Oh. Which, wow. That's always kind of funny. You're a little bit wow. too lifey. <laughs> wow. <laughs> now, to be fair, the reasons they cut ties with them is because uh, the Right to Life, uh, Texas Right to Life group, uh, did three things that they felt were unethical. And the three things that they stated, I think I, I would agree, even if you are a Right to Lifer, uh, it's, it wasn't uh, it wasn't the clean way of doing what they were doing. They were... Uh, rating people on their right to lifiness and it was not on their actual voting record it was on their uh, assessment of how the what the person did or said or something i'm not sure exactly it doesn't say wow. in the article right uh so voting record that you have to really 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 you have to have a, a sign in your front yard or something i don't know and then um uh the okay perhaps the most topical with texas political primaries looming on march 6th was the bishop's disapproval of Right to Life's voter guide. Um, yeah, I already said that one. This Where's the one that I wanted to read? Here, hang on. Ah, this one was interesting to me. This is the second news. The end-of-life issues, on end-of-life issues, the bishops countered Texas Right to Life's suggestions that the church supported legislation allowing euthanasia and death panels. Uh, the bishops stated that the legislation reflected the long-standing church teaching requiring a balance of patient autonomy and the physician conscience protection. So I, I feel so conflicted about this. Um, I, I, am, I, I know that this is supposed to be good news and that it's moving forward insofar as that the, the Catholic Church here has acknowledged that everybody has a right to feel how they feel. Live and let live is what that basically says. Mm -hmm. Awesome. If somebody dumps my ass in a Catholic hospital and I need something to happen that's going to save my life and I'm pregnant and it might hurt the baby and they choose the, the, or the, the fetus and they choose the fetus over my life, that's not, it's still not okay. Yeah. Uh, so I, like I said, it's a, it's kind of good news. It's, it's almost there. Um, and then on the bless their hearts. Uh, oh wait, wait, wait. Yeah, this is part of underneath the this whole uh, Texas right to life thing. So this was this I, in the article. This is just nuts. Republican. Oops, I, I did know, it. Right. Uh, this is uh, completely uh, bizarre. Okay, Republican state representative Matt Rinaldi the pro-life whip during the last session of the Texas legislature issued a four-page letter to Bishop Edward Burns of Dallas defending Texas' right to life, speculating that lay staff and not the bishops themselves were responsible for the advisory. Wow. Isn't that hilarious? It's like, so, oh, the, the secretaries got together and wrote this and sent it Does out. the bishop so, know they did this? <laughs> Someone needs like, to tell them. <laughs> so they've invented a conspiracy theory to Absolutely. explain this. Yes. How convenient. Yeah. I just, I thought made me laugh. I was like, oh, you've got to be shitting me. I, I want to say I've got this one in here that's Pence. Pence, abortion will end in U.S. in our time. And just kind of ties into what you're talking about. It was um, Well, I hope it does kind of because <laughs> I hope it's because we have so much sex ed out there and so much birth control. That we don't need it. Is that what yeah. you mean? Is that what he means? Vice President Pence predicted Tuesday that legal abortion would end in the U.S. in our time. Quote. Oh, that's, no, nah, that's not um, cool. I know in my heart of hearts this will be the generation that restores life in America, Pence said at a luncheon <laughs> in Nashville, Tennessee, life. hosted by has, the Susan has, B. Anthony List and Life Institute. <laughs> an abortion, an anti abortion organization, quote, if all of us do all we can, we can once again in our time restore the sanctity of life to the center of American law, unquote. Pence has long championed anti-abortion policies as congressman, as the governor of Indiana, and as vice president. Super. Has he um, bothered to acquaint himself with the generation that's about to graduate from high school right now? Not so much. There's uh, a wave coming, and uh -huh, these I kids so. are... Yeah. Are the, the kids edge. are all right, right? Yeah, it, it makes me feel so I mean, much better. It you know, was it's really telling to hear the the children after the um, 
the yeah. Parkland shooting and some of the comments that they made that I kind of, you know, there were, there were a few little dog whistles in there. Like one was um, somebody was saying, you know, they care more about a fetus than a real child. Mm-hmm. And I was just mm-hmm. like, well, I've heard that plenty of times where I live, but I'm not sure that the church is used to hearing it. You know? Yeah, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. especially not from 17-year-olds. Yeah. You know? right. But apparently Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School has a very active debate program. They require uh-huh. all the kids to participate in it. And so uh-huh. what you're seeing Reason. are these kids in who are... Action. Critical thinking. Yeah, That's they're, they're awesome. used to critical thinking. They're used to expressing yeah. themselves yeah. in public like mm-hmm. this. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it's Women's History Month, so I just want to, you know, point out that Emma Gonzalez, one of those students, is mm-hmm. absolutely fierce. Yeah. I look forward to seeing oh, what yeah, she's going to do. She's hard to miss. Yeah. So... Yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing and what I, she does. Just to say, future. like, I don't know if everybody, I mean, when I, I took debate, I know, in high school, I took speech in college, but I took debate yeah. in high school. And I, re- I remember, um, just in case people haven't taken it, I mean, there were times I had to defend positions that I did not right. hold. Right, right. So yeah. you, they make you, and there were times I had to defend positions I didn't hold and I won. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. it's, it's really rough oh. when you think that there's no way you're, it kind of, to me, the thing was, you know, you feel like you're going to go down in flames and you're just like, well, this is such a reprehensible position I'm being asked to defend. Like no right. one, you know, I'm going to walk in and they're going to hate me and no one's going to even mm-hmm. care what I have to say. So I would research it to death, right? Mm-hmm. I would come up with, I would think of all the reasons I didn't agree with it. And then I would look for all of the reasons I would rebut that. Mm-hmm. And even though at the end of, you know, these defenses, I would be thinking like, yeah, I wouldn't buy this crap, you know, but yeah. um, other people that were in, I think a lot of times in a position that was more acceptable or, or more em- people empathized with more, they wouldn't do as as hard. They wouldn't work as hard mm-hmm. on their defense. Mm-hmm. And it was, it was kind of horrifying to me to go in with a position that was really awful and walk away with trouncing somebody. And I'm like, this is, this is hideous, yeah. but it does make you think it makes you anticipate what someone's going to say to you. It makes you think about what you think about it. What other people are going to think about it. What do people who do defend this think about mm-hmm. it? How do they view it? It mm-hmm. makes you look at that. Right. 